Welcome to my full ship tour of Cunard's Queen Elizabeth. This absolutely beautiful cruise ship joined the Cunard fleet back in 2010 and was named by none other than the late Her Majesty the Queen. This cruise ship is a mid-sized cruise ship and is 964 foot long and boasts a capacity of 2,081 guests and 911 crew. In this video today, I am going to show you every single venue on board this stunning cruise ship. So without further ado, let's climb aboard. Welcome to Cunard's Queen Elizabeth and what better place to start our tour today than all the way down at the bottom on deck number one. Welcome to the Grand Lobby. This main atrium space is potentially one of the most stunning lobby areas I've ever seen on a cruise ship. It's difficult to believe that this ship was launched in 2010 looking like this when you compare her to some of the much more modern ships that would have been built around the same time. Now this triple floored atrium is covered in beautiful dark wood and very nice ambient lighting which really sets the tone for what is going to be a pretty classy cruise experience. Now all the way around this atrium you will see beautiful levels of intricate detail whether that is down to the woodwork, down to the murals or down to the individual cornicing all the way around the room which again all individually lights up. Music wise in this lobby you will find most of the day this automatic piano playing which is really beautiful. On gala nights you'll then find string quartets and whatnot in here as well to set the tone and you will always find the most beautiful fresh flowers on board in this space. I was on board for 14 nights and every single day these flowers were refreshed and you could smell them from all the way up on deck number three. Now the next venue that we're going to look at is actually still within the Grand Lobby and that's the purser's office. This is Cunard's way of terming reception. So if you need anything, just come here and directly opposite you'll find the tour office where you can book any of your shore excursions or catch up with the team about what you've experienced ashore. And directly beside that is the voyage sales office, which is essentially the future cruise center. So if you'd like to maximize on a deal while on board, you can do that just right in here. It's important to note this is only open for a few hours each day, so don't miss out. And the final venue to look at in this lobby on deck number one is the shoreside shopping desk. So if you're looking to do some shopping, you can speak to the team here to get some advice and some help. Moving up one deck, let's move to deck number two. The venue that we're now going to look at is the Britannia restaurant. Now this is the main dining room on board and this is the included offering with a basic Cunard fare. So if you're cruising in a regular stateroom on board your Cunard cruise on Queen Elizabeth, you'll probably find yourself dining in here. Now, my thoughts in here are very similar to how I felt walking into the Grand Lobby. It's just so grand and it is absolutely stunning in here. In terms of how dining works, I travelled solo on the cruise and I found it absolutely no problem at all to either sit at my own table or share a table with other passengers. All I had to do was speak to the maitre d' and they could sort it out. Now the dining room does spread across two floors. So there's an entrance downstairs and also an entrance up on deck number three. So while we're about to go back down and cover the rest of the venues on deck two, I did want to show you upstairs in the dining room just while we're here. Up here you get a totally different feel and a totally different experience. In terms of how dining works on this cruise ship, you've either got the option to go for the much more traditional early dining slot or late dining slot option where you'll dine at the same time every night, or you can opt for any time dining, which is a much more flexible option and essentially means you just turn up to the dining room when you're hungry and you'll be taken to a table. Leaving the main dining room behind, we now find ourselves in an absolutely beautiful, fully carpeted corridor which runs the majority of the length of the ship. The next main venue you would find if you walked down here would be the Grand Lobby. But first, let's stop on our way there to look at the Britannia Club restaurant. This restaurant is reserved exclusively 
for those passengers who have chosen to travel in a Britannia Club balcony stateroom. So if the class of cabin you've booked is Britannia Club, then you'll be welcome to dine in here. Now what that means is that you are privy to a much more exclusive and intimate dining environment than what everybody else would have down in the main dining room that we were in a second ago. This dining venue is a clear example of the class system that exists on Cunard and it does attract quite a lot of praise but also quite a bit of criticism. Now you'll see a further example of this later in this video when we head up to look at the Queen's Grill, the Princess Grill and also the external terraces up on the top deck. I think you can agree though, this venue is absolutely stunning. Leaving that behind, let's head next door into Cafe Corinthia. This venue is the onboard speciality coffee shop and you'll find this open all day and well into the evening. During the day, it specialises in speciality pastries, you can get snacks in here at lunchtime, but most importantly, it is tea and coffee in a very chilled out, relaxed environment. Yes, again, there are fresh flowers everywhere in here and in the evening, this turns in to a really nice cocktail bar. In terms of location, here is directly outside Cafe Corinthia and you can see that it's part of the grand lobby. Now, if we move around to the other side of that space, we're going to find the Veranda Restaurant. Now, this is the first speciality dining option that we're going to talk about on this tour. You can see straight away that we leave behind the world that we're used to from the beginning of this tour. We've left behind all those dark, rich woods and we've entered what feels like a much more modern restaurant than what I would have expected to find based on what we've seen so far. Now, this is the onboard steakhouse. I personally didn't dine in here, but you could dine in here every evening of your cruise and also at lunchtime if the ship is at sea. If you'd like to find out more about opening times and various other aspects of this restaurant, then head over to my full Cunard dining guide, which you can find linked below down in the description. Now, right next door to the Veranda Steakhouse, you're going to find a very different venue, and that is the onboard library. This space is potentially the most stunning library I've ever seen on a passenger cruise ship. It operates across two floors, where the ground floor, which is where we are at the moment on deck number two, features the checkout desk, a communal reading space, and also this absolutely beautiful globe that I'll take you over and show you now. And then when you move upstairs, we've got a few other facilities that I'll show you in a second when we move up. This venue is surprisingly quiet considering it's just off the main lobby. And in here, you'll also find your daily crosswords and your daily puzzles available from the table by the checkout desk. Now, the main feature of this library is this absolutely stunning wooden staircase that goes up the middle of the room with an equally as stunning glass roof window up above. Now, that isn't daylight coming through that window. It's, it's backlit because the windows here are all on the side of the room. But if I take you up and show you what's up here, you can see that you have more books and you also have some computers. So if you have an internet package and you'd like to keep in touch with loved ones back home or do a bit of browsing, then you can head in here. Just remember that you do need to have a Wi-Fi package in order to access those computers. Any books that you do check out here, it's completely free of charge to take them back to your stateroom as long as you return them before you disembark the ship on your final day. Moving towards the front of the ship, the next place we're going to come across is Cunard Place. Now down here, you'll find a couple of different shops and most importantly, you'll find some of the historical artifacts that exist involving this ship and also the ships who have also bore the name Queen Elizabeth in the past. It was so interesting to find some information here from the Queen Elizabeth II, which I stayed on back in March of last year in Dubai. So yeah, it was very unexpected to find that on here. Now moving next door, welcome to the Queen's Room. This has got to be one of my absolute 
favourite venues on board this ship. It is just stunning. I've never come across a ballroom that looks anything like this on a cruise ship before and as soon as I walked in here, I understood exactly why Cunard has a name for ballroom dancing. I couldn't wait for the first night of my cruise to get in here to see what it was like full of people and it didn't disappoint. You can come in here every night of your cruise for lots of ballroom dancing or you can also come in here at 3pm each day, which is where you'll get to experience a full service Cunard white gloved afternoon tea. Take it from me, it is well worth grabbing a chair underneath these gorgeous chandeliers and tucking in to a scone, some cakes and a cup of tea. Leaving the grandeur of the Queen's Room behind, let's continue our journey towards the front of this ship. The next venue that we're going to find is just at the bottom of this beautiful LED lit staircase. These stairs break this part of the ship in half. You've got the casino on one side and the pub that we'll go into in a second over on the other. This is one of the smallest casinos that I've found on a cruise ship, but I do find that British cruise ships tend to not have as busy casinos as what you would find on American ships. So at no point was it ever crowded in here. It was absolutely fine for slots or for tables. And over the other side of this space here, we're going to enter the Golden Lion Pub. Now this is, as you probably are imagining, the typical British boozer on board Queen Elizabeth. And the theming in here is absolutely excellent. During the day, you've got some beautiful views of the ocean, but at night, you actually could feel like you're in a British pub on land. Plenty of live music and games on the go in here all day and all night as well, alongside some beautiful artwork featuring some of the absolutely remarkable ships in the Cunard fleet. Now, right next door, we are now in the main show lounge on board Queen Elizabeth. Welcome to the Royal Court Theatre. This venue spans across decks one, two, and three. The reason why we didn't cover it on our deck one part of this tour and we're covering it as part of deck two is because despite the fact you can enter on three different levels, the main entrance is on deck two, which means you can drop down past all of the stadium seating to wherever you would like to go. In terms of seating options in here, they are plentiful. You've got the flat seating at ground level on the bottom. You've then got the tiered seating that takes you all the way up to the deck two entrance. You then have a mezzanine up on deck number three, which is where we are right now. And then you have a very different type of seating that I've never ever seen on a cruise ship before. This is the Cunard Queen Elizabeth box experience. These individually numbered boxes are available for booking before the main stage shows. So if you have a Cunard production team show, you can book one of these boxes with a glass of champagne for a set fee, which means you can come in to a reserved seat in a totally private environment. My word of warning though is that while that's a lovely experience, I did find the views from a lot of the boxes to be relatively obstructed due to the fact that you've got those large glass dividers in front of you, but an absolutely stunning theater nonetheless. Moving up to deck number three, this is the main promenade deck. This cruise ship is one that I absolutely adore because it has a feature that so many newer cruise ships have done away with and that is the outside promenade deck. Down here, you can find an array of different seating options, whether it's wooden benches or whether it's these beautiful traditional wooden loungers. And you can also find some of what I think is the best wildlife spotting views on the whole ship because you're not too far above the water level here and you're directly underneath the lifeboats of the ship. Another really great feature down here is that even when it's raining, you can enjoy the views from these enormous gaps in the hull of the ship. And you can also come down to the very back and look at some of the most impressive wake views that you're going to get on this ship. You can also see the wake from up on the top deck, but look at how close you are here. It is absolutely remarkable. Now going from those beautiful wake views at the back of the ship, 
all the way back inside towards the front, the next venue to look at is the Royal Arcade Shops. This part of the ship is where you can go perfume shopping, you can go jewellery shopping, you can go duty free alcohol shopping, you can go clothes shopping. You get the picture, there is a wide array of shops available here and you can see in this shot that the shopping arcade is on the upper floor from the casino so you can take those LED lit stairs up one level and that will bring you to here. Heading towards the back of the ship, the next venue to look at is the art gallery. Clarendon Fine Art was the supplier offering the art gallery facilities on board during my cruise and the way the gallery works on Queen Elizabeth, it's very much a main corridor so you'll very often walk through this gallery to go between different venues. For example, if you're coming out of the theatre and going back to one of the bars, you'll probably, if you've been sitting on deck three, you'll walk straight through here. So make sure you stop, have a look, and see if anything might even take your fancy. Directly outside the gallery, you're going to find the bookshop. So if you'd like to purchase any books, you can do that here. And then next up, you've got the midships bar. We are back in the grand lobby for this venue, and you'll find this up on the top section of that atrium, up on deck three. This is another really quiet, really peaceful cocktail bar. I never found any of the bars in this grand lobby to ever be noisy. And in here, why not treat yourself to Cunard's own brand of gin? Directly opposite, here's the alcove. This, I think, is a really nice way to spend some time on a sea day. You can just come along and work on a jigsaw that one of your fellow passengers has started. Maybe you might even finish it. And directly next door to the alcove, you're going to find the card room, which as the name suggests, is where you can come in and play cards. You can either come in here and meet a fellow passenger to play, or keep an eye on your daily schedule because there are some organised events in here too. And moving towards the back of the ship, here's the photo gallery and studio. This is where you can come to view any photographs that the onboard photographers may have taken of you during your cruise, or you can book in for a private photography session with one of the onboard team. In terms of prices, I found them to be relatively expensive, but you can pause the video here to have a look and see if onboard photography might be something that you would be interested in. Now, there's a few decks before we head up to the top that are passenger cabins only, but there is one facility on board these decks that I did want to show you today, and that is the guest laundrette. In here, you can totally free of charge wash and dry your clothes, and you can also iron your clothes. So after you've been on maybe even a long haul flight to get your ship, don't worry, you can freshen everything up when you get on board. Anyway, let's continue on our tour. We're now going all the way up to deck number nine, and welcome to the onboard spa and fitness centre. This is a part of the ship that considering it launched back in 2010, I think is ageing absolutely fantastically. The gym has a wide range of cardio equipment, class space, and also free weights. So whether you want to come up here, do a bit of exercise on the treadmill, maybe you want to do a spin class on the bikes, or maybe you want to do a bit of strength training using the free weight zone, you can do that in here. I was really impressed and I also found the gym to always be really, really quiet. So this is a great ship to look after yourself as well as enjoy yourself in the bars and the restaurants. Right next door to the gym, you're going to find something that not too many people know exists on board this ship, and that is the totally included in your basic cruise fare on board sauna. In here, you'll find showering facilities. Yes, there are shower curtains because look, at what you are looking out onto. It is absolutely amazing. And you'll also find a full sauna in here. It's worth mentioning these saunas are split gender. So in here, you'll find that it's male only. And in the other sauna, you'll find it's female only. So you don't need to worry about changing before you go up. You can do that in there and you're surrounded by your own gender. Right next door, you'll find the relaxation room, which is where you can spend a little bit of time, maybe before 
or after your spa treatments. This is an absolutely silent part of the ship and it's so opulent to come in here, have a glass of infused water and just watch the ocean rolling past. Before you head to here, which is one of the onboard treatment rooms, you can see full price lists available on the Cunard website if you were to be interested in booking when on board. Also within the spa, you're going to find a full service salon where you can come and get your hair done, you can come and get your nails done, you can come and get your feet done. There's a whole array of treatments available there. And let me now show you the hydro pool. This does cost extra over and above your cruise fare, but I think you'll agree, it's a truly beautiful space. It also feels really, really modern in here. There's only a limited amount of tickets that are sold for this space during your cruise, so if you are interested in the hydro pool facilities, make sure you get in early. And this is also where you'll find the onboard thermal suite with an array of steam rooms, saunas, and heated loungers, again, looking out over that ocean. Moving outside into the sunshine and into the heat, the first pool area that we need to look at today is the pavilion pool. This is the main pool deck on board, and here you'll find the pool itself, plus a couple of whirlpools, and a wide array of seating. So whether you want to opt for a sun lounger, rattan furniture, or a dinner table, you can do that up here. If you'd rather be inside but still enjoying the sun, then you can check out the garden lounge. The huge mural above the stage at the front was actually completed while I was on board. So the artist was on board the ship when I got on board in Los Angeles. And it was really cool to experience a little bit of history being made with artwork being finished live before our very eyes. Now in here, I will warn you, it gets warm. So if you are cruising in the summer season or just in a generally hot climate, you probably won't spend too much time in here during the day, but it's lovely at night. Now joined on to the garden room is the Lido restaurant. This is Cunard Queen Elizabeth's version of the onboard buffet. In here, you'll find it open for breakfast, lunch, dinner, afternoon tea, evening snacks, and general snacks throughout the day. The food offering on here really is plentiful. What I'm showing you now is just a quick spin round. What was on offer on a day for breakfast? But if you'd like to see more, then head over to my dining guide, which is linked down in the description, and check out much, much more from this venue. I did find that food in here was always plentiful, it never would run out. It was very, very impressively done. Now, in terms of how the Lido restaurant works, it goes down at two sides of the ship and both sides are usually available for most meals. Now, one side will then close at night to become a speciality restaurant that I'll show you more of in that dining guide. It's also worth mentioning up here, you get ice cream totally included in your cruise fare and it's available all day. You also get tea, you get coffee, you get water, and you get some varieties of fruit juice that are also available all day. So do not worry about having to always pay for your coffee or having to always pay for your drinks. That's simply not the reality. And in fact, on my 14 night cruise, I didn't even have a drinks package and I genuinely don't think I would take one if I were to go back on to Cunard because there were plenty of options up here to keep me completely hydrated. Now moving outside all the way at the very back of the ship, this is the Lido pool deck, which is the second main pool area on board. Here you're going to find a covered dining area so you can bring your food from the buffet out here, or you can dine at the Lido grill. This is the burger and hot dog station that you'll find directly by the pool. So this is the perfect definition of casual poolside dining. Here's the menu, so you can pause and have a read at that, but take it from me, the food here was an absolute delight. So if you're cruising on board, make sure you get up there and try a burger and try a hot dog. Now echoing my sentiment from the previous pool, there's a really wide array of seating options here. So whether you want to lie down, whether you want to sit up, whether you want to recline, You'll have absolutely no issues doing that here. I would never struggle to get a lounger 
on board this ship. And if you've followed my vlog series, you'll know that I very rarely wake up early. <laughs> I only tend to get up early to, for example, film a ship tour. So yes, the fact I could always get loungers was a massive plus point because on a lot of ships, I really struggle by the time I make it up and about. Now moving up a deck from there, welcome to deck 10 and it's time to look at some of the external deck spaces on board. Now this space looks over that covered dining area that we were in down on deck 9 a few minutes ago and this is where you'll also find some of the deck games that are printed onto the ground. Now this is shuffleboard, you can find the instructions for this printed on the wall so if you've never played don't worry, the world is your oyster. Now coming away from the back, next up you've got the play zone and also the zone which are the onboard kids facilities. I didn't go in here for obvious reasons because I cruise solo and I don't cruise with family. So I opted to not get in here to film. And moving further towards the front of the ship again, we're going to find the wraparound top deck that goes around the pavilion pool. This was one of my favourite places to spend time because you got away from everyone sunbathing and you could just come chill out up here and read your book at one of the tables. It's actually really unusual to find these patio sets on a cruise ship. I really, really liked it and there were also a few nights where I would order either room service or go to the buffet and get food and bring it up here to eat because it was always so, so peaceful after the heat of the day. Now continuing towards the front of the ship, let's look at the ship plaques. If you've followed my channel for a while, you'll know that I love this element of cruising and these plaques and these gifts are presented to a cruise ship when it first docks or first visits a port of call. I love coming in here and finding, for example, my local cruise port, finding maybe the furthest cruise port from where I live. I just find it absolutely fascinating. And right at the very front of the ship, let me show you the Commodore Club. This venue is the onboard piano bar lounge on board Queen Elizabeth. And it's a really lovely space to spend a bit of time. Look at the views that you're getting out of these windows that wrap all the way around the venue. I was on board for the Panama Canal Transit and this was one of the most impressive venues for views. So if you're cruising on an itinerary that features a real bucket list view, you might want to consider getting up early to come in here. You'll also find in here the ship model for Queen Elizabeth alongside some other ship models as well. This is Queen Mary 2 and if you'd like to see on board this beautiful ship then head over to my channel and head for my full ship tour and I'll do just that. Anyway, next door to the Commodore Club is the Admiral's Lounge. This lounge is very rarely open to the public. It tends to be quite heavily booked during cruises so you'll find that quite a lot of different groups will meet in here and through the wall is the Churchill Cigar Lounge. This is an indoor space that you're permitted to smoke cigars. It's worth noting that you're not permitted to smoke cigarettes in here, only cigars. Now, I personally don't really like this being right beside the Commodore Club because I do find that corridor outside can often smell of cigars and as a non-smoker, I, I just don't really like that. Anyway, my moan aside, let me show you the next venue which is right next door. This is the Yacht Club remaining on deck 10 and look at how opulent this is. It is just absolutely stunning. This venue during the day usually has absolutely nothing on. As the day progresses, I would find there would be ballroom dancing, lessons and classes in here and when night would fall, this beautiful chandelier would switch off, the lighting rig around the outside would activate and this would become the onboard nightclub. Now moving up another deck, all the way at the front of the ship, let me show you the sports pavilion. In here, there's a number of sports that I've never ever seen on a cruise ship before. I love when I find something totally different. This is a croquet lawn, where you could come up and play croquet, or if that's not your cup of tea, then why not head directly next door to the short mat bowls? So if you like lawn bowling, Believe it or not, you can do that on this cruise ship. It's amazing to see Cunard doing things slightly differently to their competitors out there in the market. I found this would be 
pretty popular early in the morning, but due to the position of this and due to the cruise itinerary I was on, it got very, very warm up here during the mid-afternoon periods, which was great for me, but I know a lot of people it would be far too hot for. And right next door to that, you'll find paddle tennis. So this is the final sport that's available in the pavilion. I absolutely love the fact that they've even got a tennis court on here. I've very often found basketball courts on cruise ships, but very rarely, if at all, have I found a bespoke custom-built tennis court. Directly outside the sports pavilion, you will find the giant chessboard. I actually never saw anybody playing this. It's very hidden, so I think maybe my fellow cruisers didn't know it was there. Leaving the heat of the day behind, let me now take you inside to show you the opulent grills lounge up on deck number 11. This lounge is reserved exclusively for any passengers who have chosen to travel in a Queen's Grill Suite or a Princess Grill Suite. In here during the day, you can find the perfect space to settle down with your book or to experience the famous Grill's afternoon tea. There's also a concierge in here should you need any help. Now, if you are travelling in a Queen's Grill or Princess Grill suite, then you'll find yourself allocated a dining reservation within the relevant restaurant. The first one that I'm going to show you here is the Queen's Grill, and after this we'll move through and look at the Princess Grill. This dining venue is absolutely beautiful. Everything about this room, in my opinion, just screams exclusivity and, to be honest, wealth all the way down to the marble pillars that feature on the walls, the wooden pillars that are in the middle of the room. Everything in here is just absolutely beautiful. And look at how the tables are dressed in comparison to what we saw together down in the Britannia restaurant. Everything in here is just exquisite. You'll also find fresh flower displays on the tables up here. And yeah, I think I've now added to my bucket list that I would love to one day experience a Queen's Grill experience firsthand. Right across the hall, you're going to find the Princess Grill, which is another really exclusive dining venue reserved exclusively for those guests travelling in a Princess Grill suite. Now, I don't think this is quite as opulent as what we've just seen through in the Queen's Grill. However, it's still an absolutely beautiful dining room that I absolutely would love to try for myself sometime. I would love to know if anyone watching this video is booked in to try Queen's Grill or Princess Grill Suites. Let me know down in the comments and let me know what cruise you were on or what cruise you're planning to be on. I would love to know if it met what would be my very, very high expectations at the price point that they're currently targeting. Now, another facility that's available to all of those guests traveling in the suites is the outside courtyard. So if you'd like to dine outside, that's absolutely not an issue. You'll see there's a staircase going up a deck. I'll take you up there in a second. But what a lovely little private, quiet area to relax and have your breakfast. Now, let us go upstairs and let me show you the Upper Grills terraces. This is potentially my favourite thing about the Grills experience. Look at how spacious this deck is and look at how premium the furniture is. If I was lying out here, I would lie all day and I would 100% fall asleep on some of this furniture because it just looks absolutely stunning. Now up here you can either go to the deck we were on a second ago and relax in the sun or you could come up here and opt for one of the covered loungers. Now, I personally think that this deck is one of the best suite access private decks that I've found at sea. On the much bigger cruise ships, I find that the even the suite only areas are very, very overpopulated and very crowded, but up here, it looks absolute bliss. Now, another really nice touch that they've got up here is the only telescope that I could find on the ship. So if you think you see a whale or you think you see dolphins, grab that and have a look. But yeah, that is my full ship tour of Cunard's Queen Elizabeth complete. 
I really hope that you've enjoyed having a guided tour around all of the venues on this ship. And all that's left for me to say from the bottom of my heart is a massive thank you for supporting my channel and even just by watching it today. Now, if you did enjoy this video and if you did find it useful and you'd like to see more, I'd really appreciate it if you'd come with me and support my channel by clicking the subscribe button, which you can do directly underneath. And while you're down there, if you could give the video a like by clicking the thumbs up, that would also be absolutely brilliant. Let me know down in the comments what you've thought of Queen Elizabeth. Is this the first time you've seen on board? Did you enjoy it? And is it what you thought? Or have you been on board and how was your experience? I would love to hear from you down below. But for now, wherever you're watching from, thank you so much for being here. And I'll hopefully see you in one of my future videos.